Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about Exodus chapter 13 in five minutes. If you want the free PDF handouts for these studies, almost all of the book of Exodus is done and out on the website. It might need some editing, which I'm going to get to as I'm creating the physical books, but if you want to work ahead a little bit, I think I'm through chapter 35 right now as of the, the time that I'm filming this. But for today, let's talk about Exodus chapter 13. When did the events of Exodus 13 take place? Well, Moses, who has been our main character, he was born about 1571 BC, and he was 80 years old when he stood before Pharaoh and gave Pharaoh God's command to let the Israelites go from slavery. So that would be approximately 1491 BC. For our main characters in this chapter, we pretty much just have Moses and the Israelite people. Moses was God's chosen man to deliver the Israelites from slavery, and the Israelites were the large group of people that had grown from the 12 sons of Jacob. So they were a large nation now. They were the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Where did these events take place? Well, the Israelites lived in a region of Egypt known as Goshen, but when they received their freedom from Egyptian slavery after God sent the 10th plague on Egypt, they went from a place called Ramses to Succoth. And then God led them south, quote, by the way of the wilderness towards the Red Sea, which you can see down there in the bottom of the map. I've broken this chapter down into, I think, four sections. The first section, verses just one through two, the consecration of the firstborn. So this is a, a an idea, a concept that's going to be introduced here, but we're going to read about it more throughout the Old Testament. And as God's laws are explained more through books like, well, the rest of Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, so God declared that all of the firstborn of the Israelites, both men and animals, belonged to him. And this was closely connected with what happened in Egypt during the 10th plague. God had saved the Israelite firstborn from death, and now he was declaring that they needed to be dedicated to him. And then in verses 3 through 10, we have some more information about a feast that was previously introduced, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So the Israelites were freed from their slavery in the month of Abib, A-B-I-B. God instructed them to keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread following the Passover every year, beginning the 14th month, or sorry, the 14th day of Abib. No leaven was supposed to be found anywhere in the Israelite houses for seven days as a memorial of what God had done in freeing the Hebrews from slavery. And then in verses 11 through 16, we come back to this principle of the firstborn. When the children of Israel received the land of Canaan, as God had promised that they would, they were supposed to dedicate all the firstborn of the animals, of their flocks and herds, to the Lord, and they were supposed to sacrifice all of those firstborn animals. Certain animals, like donkeys, could be, quote, redeemed, and a lamb could be offered in place of that, that donkey. Firstborn human children also needed to be redeemed, and the Bible will explain more about that process later on in the Old Testament. The dedication of the firstborn, as we mentioned previously, was designed to remind Israel how God had spared their children when he sent the tenth plague on the nation of Egypt. And then in verses 17 through 22, God leads Israel out of Egypt. So you remember Pharaoh told Moses to get all of the people of Israel out of Egypt after the tenth plague. So now they are, they're finally on their way out. This is the Exodus. God didn't lead the Hebrews to Canaan through the land of the Philistines because there was war going on during that time. Instead, he led them south out of Egypt towards the Red Sea. Moses, on his way out, took the bones of Joseph to bury them in the land of Canaan. Do you remember Joseph back at the end of Genesis? I think it was Genesis chapter 50. He said, when you leave Egypt, several hundred years from now, when God fulfills his promise to lead you to Canaan, I want you to take my bones from Egypt and I want you to bury them back there in Canaan in the, the area of my forefathers, right? So Moses remembered that request and he took Joseph's bones with him. God led Israel from Succoth to, quote, Etham, that is on the edge of the wilderness. God guided the multitude of people using a pillar of cloud, during the day, and a pillar of fire during the night. 
And so that is Exodus chapter 13. Not a ton of story development, but there are several important details there about feasts and about this dedication of the firstborn that are pretty important ideas as we move through the Old Testament and even into the New Testament. So now let's talk about an application as we close. Learning about the Passover feast and the Feast of Unleavened Bread will cause you to marvel at God's story when you read the New Testament, right? So don't think that these are just obscure rules that you're never going to have any use for remembering. When you get to the New Testament, these actually serve as a proof of the Bible's inspiration. For example, the day of the Passover, which is the 14th month of Abib, was to memorialize God's deliverance of the Hebrew people from Egypt. You remember the Passover was when the Israelites killed the lamb and they put the lamb's blood over their doorpost. Well, unknown to the Hebrews at that time, that day was also being memorialized because on that very day, almost 1,500 years later, the Lamb of God, who is Jesus, was going to be killed to give his blood to deliver the world from slavery to sin. Jesus was killed on Passover day, which could not have been a coincidence, right? <laughs> and it's a clear sign that his claims to be the Son of God were, were legitimate and that Jesus' life had been providentially guided by the hand of God to, well, so that the, the Passover feast and some of these symbols that the Jews were familiar with from the Old Testament, they were foreshadows of what was coming in the true Savior, the true salvation. No man could have timed his own death to a specific day, especially considering Jesus' death was at the hands of his enemies. So understanding the symbolism and the purpose of Passover helps us to understand God's bigger story that he's writing in sending Jesus to die that day to eventually free us all from slavery to sin.